Hello loves, today I have compiled quite a few good stories, let's get started. Story, my wife said she loves me and her ex-boyfriend. To give context, I am 30 years old and have been married for two years to my wife Jane, the love my life. I am a pediatrician and earn a good salary, so my wife doesn't have to work. She and I have always been very close, we met through a mutual friend. It was quick, but even so, there was a very strong connection. I have always been somewhat shy and reserved, while she, on the other hand, is very sociable and likes to party. I have never had a problem with this since we have always had a very good relationship based on trust. A couple of months ago, I came home late at night after a long day at work. I was heading towards the bedroom when I saw Jane sitting on the bed, looking at her cell phone and laughing. I approached her, and she quickly turned off her phone, using the excuse that she was just talking to her sister. I believed her since I had a lot of trust in her. While we continued our conversation, she brought up the topic of Scott, her ex-boyfriend. I didn't have a problem with him since they had remained friends, and I liked him. She told me he was in town and that they were going to meet up the next day. I trusted her and didn't see it as something bad, so we left it at that. The next day, when I came back from work, also late, I entered my house and saw them sitting on the couch, chatting cheerfully. I couldn't help but feel a bit annoyed, but I tried to ignore it. I approached them and noticed how Scott got a bit nervous, and my wife reassured him. She told me she had invited him over to show him the house, and I didn't think much of it. We chatted the three of us, and everything seemed normal, or so I thought. Things changed a week later. My wife told me that Scott would be staying for an entire month for work since he lived about three hours away from our city. While I was at my office, I received several messages from my younger sister, who is a 21-year-old girl close to my wife. She told me she had seen Jane and Scott at some kind of party together, kissing. She then sent me a photo taken from a distance where you could indeed see them kissing. I couldn't believe it. I was at work and wanted to die. I never would have imagined that my wife, whom I love so much, was with that man. I felt devastated. After finishing my workday, I returned home as usual, feeling sad. I entered and saw my wife. She greeted me with a smile as she usually did. I sat down next to her and told her what I had found out. At first, she denied it, but then with a sad look, she admitted it. She confessed that she still had feelings for her ex-partner, but that she also loved me very much. She said her heart was torn between Scott and me. She didn't want to leave the life we had built, but at the same time wanted to be with Scott. I felt terribly bad. I don't have the words to describe how I felt when she told me that. The woman I thought I would grow old with and loved me as much as I loved her was also in love with her ex. After that, without any shame, she suggested opening our marriage. I love her with all my soul, and it hurt me a lot that she said that. After arguing for a few minutes, I told her I needed time to clear my thoughts. She, with a sad look, told me to take all the time I needed but that she would wait for me. She then took her things and left. I cried for several hours, I had never felt so sad in my life. Jane, the woman of my life, loved another man. A month has passed since she left. I am not good at expressing myself with people and find it easier to write what I feel. I thought about posting my feelings here on Reddit to get various opinions since I still love Jane and what I want most is to have her back. But it still hurts me a lot that she wants to open a relationship. I don't know what to do or who to turn to. I went to therapy, but I can't find any comfort or solution. Please tell me what to do. I don't know if I was expressive enough in this text, but I still want some advice from any of you. I will give updates. Story, my emotionally abusive ex is making me go crazy, but a part of me still loves him and can't let go. For context, my ex and I were together for a while and it was pretty good until it wasn't. He began getting really upset and would ghost me, as well as constantly telling me that I am making things worse and am always making things weird. I am also one to get insecure really easily, 
So some of these things may not seem bad for some people, but through an insecure overthinker's lens it's bad. Basically, he blocked me on everything one night and said he needed a break for a month. A month goes by, I sort of forget about him, but he texts me and the emotions come back. He said he's sorry. I forgave him. We sort of start talking again, but it was usually me sending the first text or making the first move. Fast forward to a few days ago, where I was supposed to call him, but instead see him calling with his girl BSF that I literally cannot stand everything she says is always right to my ex and he is blinded by everything she tells him. He invites me to the call however and I try talking but the said best friend is being dry while he was away from keyboard, and then I just started going quiet as she was only targeting questions towards my ex and pretending that I wasn't there. I end up texting my ex that it's getting a little awkward and I felt as if the girl BSF did not like me. He did not take this very well, and got very mad and told me I'm the one making it awkward and messing everything up, that I'm the problem, etc. And I would believe him every time. This is the kind of things that make me go into panic mode, and then start blaming myself on everything and just overall putting unnecessary pressure on myself. He then kicks me out of the call and just starts calling her and tells me he doesn't want to talk to me and that all I do is make everything worse. I attempted sharing my feelings to him, but all he would do is be sarcastic and say things like, you completely read my mind since you know everything about everyone and things like that. And would constantly ask if he could leave the call with me whenever there was a brief pause for him to put his input in. When he wasn't being sarcastic or asking to leave, he would just mumble okay or yeah in the background as a way to rush me through. Literally cried myself to sleep that night. Yes, seems like no big deal. But I have an attachment and a love still going on with my ex, and all my brain does is remember all the good times I had with him and not the other. However my heart reminds me that I need to get out because I'm putting a lot of weight on my shoulders and letting a man decide my self-worth. Letting go of someone you love is so impossible for me, but I know I have to but I just can't click the block button and delete him on everything. It's as if something stops me. I really need advice on how to get out on this situation. Story, my ex ruined my relationship and I want to warn his new girl. My ex, whom I'll call James, and I broke up last June 21st, 2023. I fell out of love and James told me to split up. I didn't know what to do that time because I begged for him to rethink his decision and maybe if we kept the communication, it would turn out great, or the sparks will come back. He insisted and we split up. A week after, James started hard launching a girl in his social medias. I don't really care because I've already fell out of love, but it's like he's been playing with me. A month passed and he contacted me, begging to get back together even asked for his friends to chat me to get back together with him. I didn't, of course. August of 2023, I thought James finally learned his lesson and I got together with an old fling, whom I'll call S, S and I only got together until September of 2023 because James was sneakily telling S about everything I've said about him in the past. For context, S is like a balance of light and dark. When we were together in middle school, S and I would constantly fight. He would randomly ask me how to court a girl knowing damn well I liked him. Back to the story, I did say some horrible things about S to James, but I never knew that he would screenshot the messages and send it to S. I was shocked and also disappointed. I apologized to S, but he insisted of splitting up. James made up stories of how S is a cheater, and every guy I point would have a cheating background. Before breakup, I gave James a raw amethyst. Now that we broke up, I've been asked him to give it back for months. And even after we broke up and lost contact, he still didn't give it back to me. It was a raw amethyst that I entrusted to him, but since we split up, I want it back, it's valuable. He's not responding to my messages anymore and acts like I don't exist. Now, James is courting a girl. Whom I'll call, K, K is a very nice person and I don't want her to be with someone like James. K, if you're seeing this, he's told me in the past that you're not his type and that he doesn't want to be involved with you. All I'm asking is for you is to run, don't let him try and court you. He's the worst. 
James once made sexual comments about me to his friend, and I was thankful that his friend didn't tolerate James' behavior. James also told that same friend that I have been depressed and would constantly H4RM myself, which is true, but he was making jokes about me and showing how insensitive he was towards my feelings and my S31FH4RM. He's a liar and someone you should not trust. Never let a guy like him come close to you. And he also lied about his size. He said he's six inch and when I saw it, it was smaller than my marker. Disappointing. It won't reach far, K, okay, don't bother. Also I found out from a friend that he's been telling everyone about our intimacy, which he promised to never let anyone know. K, okay, you deserve better. Story, a kind of sad love story. In May of 2017, I met a girl in game, to protect her identity, we will call her Diana, maybe between the 20th to 25th of May. In the match, I noticed that everyone was saying she was a girl because of a mistake a player made, thinking she was a guy lol. As the match ended, I went to private message to talk to Diana, just to establish a conversation after what happened. She ended up being a nice girl, to be honest. After one hour of talking, we shared various experiences in the game and some opinions about it. It was time to go to bed for both, so we said goodbye to each other and disconnected. As some weeks went by, we had already established a kind of friendship between us, a weird one. A lot of things happened during June, my ninth grade graduation, some friendship problems with a friend, depression from leaving high school, birthday, really, a lot of problems were in my head at that time. But I really didn't give a f asterisk 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 about all of that. Until the worst arrived. Diana told me she wanted to tell me something very important and invited me to a private room. After about 30 seconds of uncomfortable silence, she said, I am worried about something. About what? I asked. I'm getting hospitalized soon. The awkward silence returned, but only for five seconds. When? Why? Tomorrow, maybe at night, I have heart problems, they are getting worse. Are you going to be okay? I don't know. After she was going to leave, I didn't have much to say, but I dumbly said what I felt for her, I already know what you're thinking. And just after that, I barely remember her message saying, I love you too. Weird, isn't it? I'll continue the other part because I need some rest for now, I haven't slept in a while. Teletubby back, where was I? After a month and a half of knowing each other, we started to talk a lot more often. I always told her compliments to somehow distract her from her problems. Sometimes I skipped classes just to talk to her somewhere else in school. Maybe I was being manipulated by love, or the interesting fact that Diana was the first girlfriend I had in my 15 years of existence. On the 6th of August, I received a message from Diana saying that she was going to get operated on. I told her, everything will be okay, you are in good hands, nothing is going to hurt you. Then she thanked me, I am relaxed now, thanks three. I said a simple, you're welcome, and her always common but lovely, I love you. Hey, my doctor says it's time. Now that I'm relaxed, I'm not worried anymore. CYA carrot forward slash that was the last thing that I heard from her that day. I couldn't sleep that night, I was very, very worried instead of thinking she was fine. The next day after school, I went directly to my house, because f asterisk 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 the project, went straight to log into the game. She was online. Yes, she is fine. Hi Diana, how was it? What happened? Hi, I'm fine, you were right. Although I have pain in my chest, but nothing else. I was really worried about you, I didn't sleep last night. I promise I'm fine, don't worry. We started talking for a while about each other. Story, Choosing Independence In the bustling city of New York, lived a young woman named Lily. At 28, Lily had a thriving career as a journalist, a beautiful apartment in Brooklyn, and a vibrant social life. Despite her achievements, she often found herself at the center of conversations about her single status. Lily's choice to remain single was a conscious one, rooted in her desire for independence and personal growth. 
Her friends and family were supportive but curious. One evening, during a dinner party at her friend Emma's place, the topic inevitably came up. Lily, you're so amazing. Why are you still single? Emma asked, genuinely curious. Lily smiled, taking a moment to gather her thoughts. I think it's because I value my independence and the freedom to pursue my passions without compromise. It's not that I'm against relationships, I just haven't found one that fits my life right now. Her friends nodded, some understanding and others still curious. Lily continued sharing her journey of self-discovery and the reasons behind her choice. 1. Personal growth and career focus Lily had always been driven by her career. From a young age, she knew she wanted to be a journalist, telling stories that mattered. Her dedication paid off, landing her a prestigious role at a top magazine. Being single allowed her the flexibility to travel for stories, work late nights, and fully immerse herself in her passion without worrying about neglecting a partner. 2. Financial independence Growing up, Lily had seen her parents struggle financially and knew the importance of financial independence. Being single gave her control over her finances, allowing her to save, invest, and spend as she saw fit. She enjoyed the freedom of making her own financial decisions and planning for her future. 3. Exploring passions and hobbies Lily had a wide range of interests, from painting to hiking to learning new languages. Being single gave her the time and space to explore these hobbies fully. She joined a local art class, spent weekends hiking upstate, and enrolled in a Spanish course. These activities brought her joy and a sense of fulfillment that she wasn't willing to compromise. 4. Social Connections Lily cherished her friendships deeply. She had a close-knit group of friends who were like family. Being single allowed her to nurture these relationships, spending quality time with friends, traveling together, and supporting each other's dreams. Her social life was rich and fulfilling, providing her with the emotional support and companionship she needed. 5. Redefining happiness and success for Lily Happiness and success were not defined by a relationship status. She found joy in her accomplishments, her friendships, and her personal growth. She believed that being single allowed her to live authentically and pursue her true passions without external pressures. As Lily shared her story, her friends began to see her perspective. They realized that her choice to remain single was not out of necessity, but out of a desire to live a fulfilling and independent life. That night, as Lily walked back to her apartment, she felt a sense of contentment. She knew that her decision to remain single was right for her. She had built a life that she loved, filled with passion, adventure, and deep connections. In the end, Lily's story serves as a reminder that choosing a single life is a valid and fulfilling option for many young people today. It's a choice that allows for personal growth, independence, and the pursuit of one's dreams. For Lily, and many like her, singlehood is not a state of lack but a canvas for creating a rich and meaningful life. Story, the story of first love just read a touching story about a person's first love and decided to tell mine. I left a comment in that thread but will expand it here. We were both 17 and in California. She dumped me after a year or so for a guy she worked with. I went on to college, but every now and then, she would find me through mutual friends when she got dumped. She always did the same things called me all the time or wanted to hang out and, of course, wondered what it would be like if we got back together. I had no intentions of getting back together and would only hang out when I had nothing better to do, and only as a friend, preferably with other friends. She would always try to make it seem as if we were a couple, though. One night after an outing with friends, she didn't want to go home, as it was kind of far from where we were and asked to stay at my place. 
This was an apartment I shared with another student, a great guy, but we had our own rooms and a living room with a comfortable couch that many friends had crashed on. When we got there, she went right to my room and started undressing. I excused myself to the bathroom and closed the door. I didn't go back to the room, I just slept on the couch. I really didn't need the emotional roller coaster that she was, distracting me from studying. I took her home the next morning, and she acted like everything was normal. After that, I didn't hear from her again. But that's how it always was, eventually, she would disappear because she would get back together with whoever. After college, I got a good internship in Florida. That led to a great career and repayment of my college loans, a starter house, and a decent car. At 30, I met a nice, never married, no kids woman, not that there is anything wrong with that, who I have been happily married to for 23 years. I'm 53 now with two adult sons who have solid careers. Then, about two months ago, out of the blue, she called me at work and wanted to reconnect. I'm not sure how she found my info. I know there are ways, but I have done my best to leave a small footprint on the internet. Probably it's because my boss insists on posting our names and positions on our website. Anyway, I told her I wasn't interested and I was sorry. She tried to play it off like I didn't know who she was. I assured her I did know. There was a long pause, then I asked her to please not call me anymore. I heard her sob and I hung up. Later, I got curious and asked a friend to look her up on Facebook. I don't have any social media other than where I can remain anonymous. To me, long-lost friends are long-lost for a reason. Anyway, it seems she recently divorced from the guy she dumped me for and lives about an hour or so away from me now. On her Facebook page, she had pics of herself and her adult son, and a few pics of her son's wedding with her ex on the other side of the room from her. I felt a little sorry that her life is a mess in her fifties, that these were her decisions that led her there. I'm not saying it would have been any better if we had gotten back together. I wouldn't change my life after 30 for anything. Yeah, I did a few things in my 20s I'm not proud of. Anyway, my wife would never accept reconnecting with my ex, and I would never do that to her. I did tell my wife about it, as I don't want any misunderstandings between us. Sometimes unsaid, Seemingly trivial events can get taken out of context. My wife shows me her phone and asks if it was this person. I couldn't believe what I was looking at, the display of her phone shows my ex's name and number. My wife tells me the woman asked for me, but my wife told her it was the wrong number and hung up. My wife does not like me talking to women she doesn't know, and some she does. She thought the whole thing was funny in the end. Side note, I took that girl to my junior prom and still have the pic. My wife has seen it and could care less about it, but when she saw my senior prom pic, she attempted to rip it up. Sigh, because the girl in my senior prom pic was Asian, and my wife is also Asian. I just pretend to understand how that works. Story, First Love Theory I'm 19 years old, and I'm still in love with a guy I barely talked to in the summer of 10th grade. For starters, I'm just coming on this to get it out of my system. For some background information, I met this guy who was in one of my classes right before summer started. Prior to this, I had never been in a real relationship, mostly because I think high school relationships are a waste of time and a way to break your perception of love. I had always been asked out by guys, which I thought was weird because I didn't see myself as this amazingly beautiful person. I thought I was in the middle and stuck with it because, generally, I don't care. But often, people would ask me out, and I would say no every single time. In June, towards the end of school, I started talking to this guy, which was surprising for me because I don't do talking stages, 
but he wanted to get to know me, so I actually said yes. We started talking, and I wasn't really sure if I'd even liked him, but many were surprised that we were talking because he was really well-known or popular among specific people at school, and I kind of kept to myself. Our convos in text would be pretty unresponsive because I avoided talking to him, and the few times I did talk to him in person, I said all the wrong things. For example, once I said it's good that we have one class together, he said no, we have two, and I argued, but he was right, so basically, I didn't know much about the guy. But he was kind, understanding, and really liked me. As I talked to him more, I realized he was quite different from most of his awful friends. Flash forward to summer starting. He always wanted to see me, but I always made excuses because, for starters, I have avoidant attachment issues, and second, I was afraid. But he was quite understanding. Sooner or later, things got pretty dry, and we stopped talking. The last time we talked, I intended to make plans, but that was a lie because I was actually in the hospital for reasons he would not understand. Part of the reason why I stopped talking to him was because his life was perfect. He had a loving family and people who surrounded him with unconditional love and support, and I had the complete opposite. Although we were similar as people, we were that much different in our own lives, so I left. After a week, I thought I'd be okay, but I wasn't. I felt aching heart pain. I did not know what it was. I kept thinking that I've been through so much awful shit in my life, so why does this even matter? I found myself missing everything about him, so I texted him in August, but there was no response. So then I decided to remove him from my social media. I felt like an idiot because I would not feel this way if I hadn't talked to him and played it smart like I always do. Going forward, I went back to school and found out he was in a relationship. I hated seeing him every day. It hurt me so bad knowing he'd never like me the way I liked him. What's funny is that he wanted me first. My mind was always on him. I'd talk to my friends and pretend I was talking to him. When it got to the point where I would just try to avoid him, I still saw him. I went to the fair. I saw him there. I went to the movies. I saw him there. It was just not fair. It felt like I was being punished. He was always there with his girlfriend. Although I never felt insecure, I just kept thinking about how good things could have been if I didn't sabotage my own happiness. It got to a point where everything in my life was so messed up, and every time I was hurt, I'd think about him to feel better. I just kept reminding myself how I've been through worse than most people I know, so I thought I would get over this, but I never did. I felt like Kevin when he wasn't around. Through this whole thing of a war within myself, I never let him know because, even though it was hard, I wanted to preserve respect for myself. If I told him all this, it would be a whole different story, but he'll never know. Although that hurts, I think I'm content with it. To this day, I think about him and hurt. Sometimes, when things go wrong in my life, all I think about is him and the comfort he gave me. I've always been the girl to be there for my friends and pick them up and give them motivation by telling them all the hardships in my life that also help them keep going, but I'd never had someone to make me feel like that until I met him. It's been so long, and I don't think my love ever died down or changed. Story, a beautiful love story, unexpected twist at the end. Jake and Mia met under a blossoming cherry tree where laughter and smiles exchanged like petals in the wind. Their eyes spoke volumes, and their hearts danced to the same beat. Through shared stories and stolen glances, a connection as beautiful as the setting sun bloomed between them. As days turned into weeks, they explored the city, hand in hand. Each alleyway, every cafe, and every museum held a new adventure, as if the world was waiting for their love to fill it.
the way their fingers intertwined, an unspoken promise of togetherness. One chilly autumn evening, raindrops gently kissed their faces as they strolled along the river bank. Seeking shelter, they found solace in an old bookshop. Inside, they discovered a hidden world, the pages of books telling tales of love, adventure, and dreams. Mia gifted Jake a leather-bound journal, a canvas for his thoughts and a testament to their love. He filled it with verses, expressing the depths of his affection. Mia, in turn, painted vibrant canvases, capturing the colors of their shared emotions. Seasons changed, but their love remained constant, like the North Star guiding sailors through the night. The snow-covered streets became their playground as they embraced the warmth of each other's company. In the spring, a surprise picnic by a field of wildflowers, with a handmade bouquet as the centerpiece, marked a milestone in their journey. Jake's eyes sparkled with emotion, and Mia's laughter echoed like the sweetest melody. With time, their love deepened, transcending words. It was in the way they cared for each other, the way they supported dreams and wiped away tears. A connection so profound that no obstacle could break it. In a quaint chapel, surrounded by family and friends, Jake and Mia exchanged vows, sealing their love with a kiss. It was a celebration of a love story written in the stars, a tale that touched the hearts of all who witnessed it. Jake finally asked Mia a question that had been on his mind for a long time. He asked, By the way, what is Mia short for? Mia replied, Oh, it's short for Michael. And so, their love story, like a timeless melody, continued to unfold, a testament to the enduring power of love, written in the language of their hearts. Story, my emotionally abusive ex is making me go crazy, but a part of me still loves him and can't let go. For context, my ex and I were together for a while and it was pretty good until it wasn't. He began getting really upset and would ghost me, as well as constantly telling me that I am making things worse and am always making things weird. I am also one to get insecure really easily, so some of these things may not seem bad for some people, but through an insecure overthinker's lens it's bad, basically, he blocked me on everything one night and said he needed a break for a month. A month goes by, I sort of forget about him, but he texts me and the emotions come back. He said he's sorry. I forgave him. We sort of start talking again, but it was usually me sending the first text or making the first move. Fast forward to a few days ago, where I was supposed to call him, but instead see him calling with his girl BSF that I literally cannot stand everything she says is always right to my ex and he is blinded by everything she tells him. He invites me to the call however and I try talking but the said best friend is being dry while he was away from keyboard and then I just started going quiet as she was only targeting questions towards my ex and pretending that I wasn't there. I end up texting my ex that it's getting a little awkward and I felt as if the girl BSF did not like me. He did not take this very well, and got very mad and told me I'm the one making it awkward and messing everything up, that I'm the problem, etc. And I would believe him every time. This is the kind of things that make me go into panic mode, and then start blaming myself on everything and just overall putting unnecessary pressure on myself. He then kicks me out of the call and just starts calling her and tells me he doesn't want to talk to me and that all I do is make everything worse. I attempted sharing my feelings to him, but all he would do is be sarcastic and say things like, you completely read my mind since you know everything about everyone and things like that and would constantly ask if he could leave the call with me whenever there was a brief pause for him to put his input in. When he wasn't being sarcastic or asking to leave, he would just mumble okay or yeah in the background as a way to rush me through. Literally cried myself to sleep that night. Yes, seems like no big deal. But I have an attachment and a love still going on with my ex, and all my brain does is remember all the good times I had with him and not the other. However my heart reminds me that I need to get out because I'm putting a lot of weight on my shoulders and letting a man decide my self-worth. Letting go of someone you love is so impossible for me, 
but I know I have to but I just can't click the block button and delete him on everything. It's as if something stops me. I really need advice on how to get out on this situation. Story, the first boy I loved. Once upon a time, in a small, picturesque town, there was a charming little school where children's laughter filled the air, and dreams were born every day. In this school, there were two students, Emma and Jack, both in the fifth grade. Emma was a bright, cheerful girl with a heartwarming smile and a love for books. Jack, on the other hand, was a shy boy with a passion for drawing and a talent for making people laugh. Their story began on a crisp autumn morning. The school bell had just rung, and students were bustling about, getting ready for class. Emma, carrying a stack of books, tripped over a loose stone on the path and fell, scattering her books everywhere. Jack, who was nearby, rushed to help her. Are you okay? Jack asked, offering his hand to help her up. Emma looked up, slightly embarrassed but grateful. Yes, thank you, she replied, taking his hand. As Jack helped Emma gather her books, they started talking and discovered they had a lot in common. Both loved reading adventure stories and drawing imaginary worlds. From that day on, they became fast friends. Every day after school, Emma and Jack would sit under a large oak tree in the schoolyard, sharing stories and drawing together. Their friendship grew stronger, and they became inseparable. Emma loved how Jack could make her laugh, and Jack admired Emma's intelligence and kindness. One winter afternoon, the school announced a talent show. Emma and Jack decided to participate together. They spent weeks preparing a skit based on their favorite adventure story. Emma wrote the script, and Jack designed the costumes and props. They practiced every day, laughing and encouraging each other. The night of the talent show arrived, and the school auditorium was packed with students, teachers, and parents. Emma and Jack stood backstage, nervously holding hands. We can do this, Emma whispered, squeezing Jack's hand. Jack nodded, smiling. Together. Their performance was a huge success. The audience laughed and cheered, and Emma and Jack beamed with pride. After the show, they received a standing ovation and a special award for their creativity and teamwork. As they walked home that night, under a sky full of stars, Emma and Jack felt a bond stronger than ever. They knew they had something special, a friendship that would last a lifetime. Years passed, and Emma and Jack grew up. They went to different high schools and then colleges, but they never lost touch. They continued to share their dreams and support each other through life's ups and downs. One summer, after they had both graduated from college, they returned to their hometown for a visit. Walking through the old schoolyard, they found themselves under the same oak tree where their friendship had blossomed. Remember our talent show? Jack asked, smiling. Emma laughed. How could I forget? It was the best night of my life. Jack took a deep breath, gathering his courage. Emma, there's something I've wanted to tell you for a long time. I think I've loved you since that day we met. Emma's heart skipped a beat. She looked into Jack's eyes and saw the same kindness and warmth that had always been there. I love you too, Jack, she whispered. Under the old oak tree, where their innocent, school-age love began, Emma and Jack shared their first kiss, sealing a promise of love that had started with a simple act of kindness and had grown into something beautiful and everlasting. And so, their story continued, a testament to the power of friendship and love that started in the heart of a small, picturesque town and blossomed into a lifetime of happiness together. Story, how my three-year relationship ended and how I acted. So my girlfriend, 42 years old, and I, 40 years old, met in 2020, we started as friends trying to improve our own lives. We met on social media through a company that sells life insurance and home slash auto insurance. We really get along. We decided to meet and have a meeting at my house so I could begin the process of starting to work for the company. We had to watch a video and it was so boring. So we kissed throughout the video. One thing led to another and we collided after half an hour. We had fun and were like teenagers who met in a hotel and were bunnies. We went on a date and really had fun together. 
How wonderful. We talked a bit about moving in together and she was about to go on a business trip, so I offered to watch her house and take care of her cats. To her surprise, she agreed. She was away for a week so that was great. She scheduled a veterinary exam and the vet said she was on vacation instead of working. I was angry because I would rather go with her if that were true. But that's not true. I called her and she told me she wasn't on vacation. I felt bad so I sent her flowers and she loved them. She came home for the weekend and took me home. Over the next week, we went back and forth between our homes and with her schedule. We got busier and busier so we saw each other less but still talked and texted like crazy. One weekend she had to work the day I got home. She said I could stay the night but I had to go home, we slept together that night and fell asleep in each other's arms. We woke up and I made breakfast for us both. She was working from home at the time so we just did our own things, she worked and I cleaned. I guess she liked everything I did so she invited me to move in that same night. I said yes. We are wonderful together. Over the next year, we were best friends and better lovers. One night we were having sex and during that moment I felt a little strange. My legs were a bit uncomfortable and tingling. With that came loss of sensation and I couldn't really get excited, if you know what I mean. I tried to finish like she did and I couldn't. We tried to have sex several times and sometimes we both got fortune cookies. I also started not feeling it as much there. During that time, I spent more time cuddling. Although I didn't tell her I was trying to make up for the lack of sex. Nothing worked and I felt less of a man every time we tried to have sex. It got to the point where I felt so bad, I stopped trying and started sleeping on the couch. She felt abandoned and I tried to explain my feelings. She said she understood and for a while she did. We gradually drifted apart but still lived together. At this time, my hips, back, and legs were getting worse. I lost my job and had to find another job. I lost those jobs too and started going to a deep dark place that I couldn't escape from. I started therapy and medication. Those medications did not help the physical aspect I was experiencing. It was even worse when I almost forgot that I had a downstairs. I got so bad that I lost the feeling of a full bladder. Back to the end of 2023, when we were both arguing and not meeting each other's needs. Now, a few weeks ago, she decided to break up with me. She said she wanted us to remain friends. I'm okay with that. Not even 24 hours later, she had a boyfriend and was sleeping with him. I'm so hurt. I became really dark and deep. I'm angry, I'm still in love, I'm losing my life. I'm losing my house. I do not know what to do. I don't know where to go. I have never been without a home and here I lost everything. She and I are like oil and water, cats and dogs, care why piss and bloods. I found solace at the bottom of a bottle of Jameson. I have no one to talk to but her. She has her friends. My mind is broken and my heart is broken. I have never been so crazy, I actually started talking to myself and answered, no lying. Today I'm at my dad's one-bedroom apartment. Sleeping on couches and living in boxes. I thank God that I have a roof over my head, but I had to leave my life behind. I had other health problems before the new neurological problems. I'm still angry and still in love. I do not know what to do now. I applied for disability benefits and had to meet with a judge about the matter. Other than that, I don't know what else to do. Story, weirdest relationship I've ever had. A few days ago, my relationship came to an end. It was only three months long, but the whole thing was a wild roller coaster of unbelievable and unpredictable events. Looking back, I feel like a gullible idiot and don't blame anyone for feeling the same towards me. But to my defense, a lot of the details pressured me into trusting and staying in the relationship. I am not new to relationships and never had an issue getting girls, but right before I started this roller coaster, I was in a two year relationship that I ended because I just realized we were not really compatible due to not sharing any hobbies and a decent language barrier. I felt terrible for hurting her, 
but after having five months to improve myself and really think about what I wanted in a relationship, I felt ready to date again. I got on the Hinge dating app and quickly got into the groove of flirting, talking to girls again. I, 27M, was not interested in hookups and was only searching for potential relationships. I eventually picked the girl I ended up dating, 27F. Her sexuality was labeled pansexual, which kind of threw me off, but after some research, it just seemed like being a picky bisexual. Not a big deal. Our conversations were surprisingly fun and unlike any girl before. She had a good sense of humor and seemed to be down to earth, sharing the same morals and boundaries I had. She was not much my type physically, but her personality made me really attracted to her. After a few days, we talked on the phone for hours, and she eventually tells me she has only been on one date in her life and has never had a boyfriend and obviously the things that come with it like virginity and so on. Understandably, I am quite skeptical and find it weird, but all I can do is keep an eye out for signs of lying. I would usually move on respectfully after hearing this because it is a lot of pressure, and if things don't work out, you'll feel terrible. But we clicked so well, and I really felt like I found the match I never had before. We talked for about another two weeks before meeting, during this time she tells me she would like me to know something about her before moving on. She has been diagnosed with BPD, borderline personality disorder. I ask her what that all entails, and she describes it as when she gets mad about something she can get extremely mad. It sounds scary, but from so many stories she has told me, it seems like she honestly doesn't get mad enough to be honest such as forgiving people immediately for doing terrible things like totaling her car or scamming her. With this in mind, I don't make it a big deal, but again, keeping an eye out for those symptoms. Scheduling to meet was hard because she works six days a week and gets off late. We planned to meet at a 24-hour restaurant to sit in a car and talk, but last minute she decided to just come over to my place. This is a little strange for a first date that's not a hookup, but I assume she feels safe because I am in a wheelchair. She comes over and we have a great time talking until 4 a.m. and she leaves. The next day she is saying how much fun she had and is surprised I didn't try to make a move on her. I explained that since she is a virgin and all, that would be really inappropriate for me, not to mention she worked all day and went to the gym before coming over. Gross. She said it was really respectful, but if I would have tried to, she would have probably had sex. I feel really weird considering the bizarre nature of a virgin of 27 years willing to give it up so quickly. I begin not to believe her obviously. She tells me that it's just because she is tired of not knowing that part of life and just wants to rip the band-aid off. I ask why she is a virgin in the first place and explains an extremely traumatic event that happened to her as a child. I try to be understandable, and it does seem logical, so I continue with her. I tell her to really make sure that's what she wants, and we can go ahead and do it. So the next day, we do. She definitely acted like a virgin considering how awkward and unnatural it felt despite my best efforts to make things comfortable and straightforward. Right after sex she says we should get matching tattoos, something with names. Dumbfounded, I tell her how insane it is to even think about that, and I would never get anyone's name on me. She insists that she would never regret it even if things did end badly. I try to explain why it's crazy, but drop it, chalking it up to just losing her virginity and emotions are high. She then asks if I want to hear something crazy. Sure. She said that she wanted to get a surgery to have a grafted penis attached to her body above her vagina not joking. I try to stay calm and just ask questions because for me, and probably the world, this is insane. She might have picked up my concern because when I ask when she wanted this she says as a kid and she knows it is a crazy thought. I feel relieved, and it probably made the tattoo thing seem so insignificant it was out of my head. Fast forward a month, and we are in a full-on relationship. No other weird things happened during this time. But one night she is drinking, she shares a story with me. She's getting emotional explaining how a long time ago her cousin was telling her about a new surgery that could give her an almost fully functioning penis, but it turned out to be a lie. 
She then says that it is something she always wanted and will always want. I get pretty heated in the moment, questioning why she said it was not something she wanted only a month ago. She tries to say that is how she felt in the moment when I asked her initially. I explain how it makes no sense, and eventually she says she was embarrassed. She then gets defensive and says she thought if you loved someone it shouldn't matter. I tell her I don't live in a fairy tale, and I ignore 99.9% .9 of people would stay after something like that. Just so it's clear, I am not talking about being transgender, I am talking about having a Frankenstein penis made from random parts of your body. I explain how it would not feel or function like a penis whatsoever and at that point, you are just insane. She then tries to argue about how it is probably possible to do that, and I explain how complicated nerves and technology isn't even good enough to fix nerves for a broken back like mine. I tell her if she plans on doing this, she will have to find someone else that is okay with it. She explains that she wouldn't do anything that her partner wouldn't like, so if we are together, it will never happen. Looking back I am embarrassed I did not leave because obviously she has some serious issues, but I was trying to not be judgmental considering I have told her so many things about me and she gave me the same curiosity. After that night, I kinda blocked it out of my head and pretended it never happened. I would be happy as long as it never came up. Story, Thriving at 30 In the vibrant city of Austin, Texas, lived a woman named Emma. At 30, Emma had a successful career as a graphic designer, a cozy apartment filled with art and plants, and a close circle of friends. Despite her accomplishments and fulfilling life, Emma often found herself reflecting on her single status, especially during social gatherings and family events. One crisp autumn evening, Emma attended a dinner party at her friend Sarah's house. As the evening progressed, Conversations naturally turned to relationships. Sarah, who was recently engaged, turned to Emma and asked, So, Emma, are you seeing anyone? Emma smiled politely, feeling a familiar twinge of discomfort. No, not right now. I'm just focusing on myself and my career. The responses varied, but the underlying sentiment was clear. Many people around her believed that being single at 30 was something that needed to be fixed. Emma left the party feeling a mix of frustration and determination. She didn't want to let societal expectations define her happiness. The next morning, Emma decided to embrace her single life fully. She made a list of goals and dreams she had been putting off and set out to achieve them. The first item on her list was to travel solo to a place she had always wanted to visit, Japan. A few weeks later, Emma found herself in Tokyo, surrounded by the city's dazzling lights and vibrant culture. She wandered through ancient temples, savored exquisite sushi, and marveled at the cherry blossoms in full bloom. Each day was an adventure, and she felt a newfound sense of freedom and empowerment. One evening, while exploring a tranquil garden, Emma struck up a conversation with a fellow traveler named Luca, who was also exploring Japan solo. They shared stories of their travels, dreams, and the paths that had led them to Japan. Luca admired Emma's courage and independence, and they quickly became friends. Back in Austin, Emma's life continued to flourish. She threw herself into her work with renewed passion, taking on challenging projects and earning recognition for her creativity. She also started painting again, a hobby she had neglected for years, and even showcased her work in a local art gallery. Emma also joined a community yoga class, where she found a supportive group of people who shared her interests. Through yoga, she discovered a sense of inner peace and balance that helped her navigate life's challenges. She realized that being single allowed her the freedom to explore her passions and grow as an individual. One day, while attending a local farmer's market, Emma ran into Luca, who had recently moved to Austin. They were thrilled to reconnect and spent the afternoon reminiscing about their time in Japan. Their friendship blossomed, and they started exploring the city together, 
from trying out new restaurants to hiking in the nearby hills. As months passed, Emma and Luca grew closer. They supported each other's dreams and celebrated their individual achievements. One evening, while watching the sunset from a hilltop, Luca turned to Emma and said, You know, meeting you has been one of the best parts of my journey. I admire your strength and independence. Emma smiled, feeling a sense of contentment. Thank you, Luca. I feel the same way. But what's important is that we both continue to grow and pursue our passions, whether we're together or apart. Their relationship, built on mutual respect and independence, was different from anything Emma had experienced before. She realized that being single at 30 had given her the time and space to understand herself better and build a life she loved. Years later, Emma looked back on her journey with pride. She had embraced her single life, traveled the world, and pursued her passions. She had learned that happiness wasn't tied to a relationship status, but to living authentically and fully. Emma's story serves as an inspiration to others who feel pressured by societal expectations. At 30, she had discovered that singlehood was not a limitation but an opportunity to thrive, grow, and create a fulfilling life on her own terms. Story, it's a love story. The following is the story of how me, 29M, and my wife, 30F, met and married. Like many other people, my freshman year of college was a roller coaster of emotions. Between adapting to a new life and schedule, trying to make new friends, and the unexpected death of my father, things were changing fast for me, and I was struggling to, to be my normal, extroverted, happy self. I became involved with a ministry in college and this helped me find like-minded people who I could not only laugh with, but also have the ability to openly talk about my struggles. My wife was also involved in this same ministry. Over time we would have discussions, but nothing too in-depth or serious. We were friendly to each other, but never anything more than that. Flash forward two years and we begin to hang out more and more because of a reason I'll touch on later, and we became really great friends. This would not last long sadly, as my wife was about to travel the world for the next two years doing ministry work in third world countries. When I say doing ministry work, I do not mean she was hanging at resorts six days a week and visiting an orphanage for an hour or so. She was truly in the trenches. Spending her years in remote villages where they don't have access to electricity or running water. While she was on this trip she didn't have the ability to talk often, but whenever given the chance I would talk to her about her stories, and this is where I began to truly fall in love with her. There was only one small problem. See, the reason we began to hang out more and more prior to her leaving was because she began dating a close friend of mine. While she was away on this mission trip my friend became getting extremely close with another girl. They would hang out regularly one-on-one, -on -one, openly cuddle each other around others, but according to my friend nothing more than that. I spoke with my friend about this relationship and how he was emotionally cheating, but he never listened or paid any attention. I felt it wasn't my place to tell my wife about this because I believed my feelings that I was developing for my herb scared me from being unbiased. After years away my wife finally returns home. Within a month of being home my wife's friends told her about the relationship between my friend and this other girl. My wife was aware that they were friends, but she was not aware to the extent of how close they truly were. This led my wife to immediately breaking up with my friend. Now, you're probably thinking to yourselves, wow, this is great news for OP. You have to remember. The reason we became close was because she was dating a friend. Also, as my wife returned from her mission trip, I had freshly graduated college and moved three hours away, back to my hometown, to begin a career. 
I also believed in my mind that my wife was only friends with me because of the relationship she had with my friend. Nevertheless, occasionally I would travel to the college town and meet up with some college friends. When doing this I would ask them how my wife was doing. They would always keep me updated, and eventually a mutual friend tells my wife that I have been asking how she was. This res parks our friendship as she begins texting me, but still, I lived three hours away so I had no intention of beginning a relationship with her, but it was still nice to be friends again. My wife, being her caring self, began fostering a two-month-old girl about a year after coming back from her mission trip. She did this while single and working a full-time job. Years pass and I am extremely displeased living in my hometown. See, my father was a small-town hero type of guy. Very well known and very loved. I worked hard to bring positive change in my community, but I felt every action I did I was always compared to my dad. People never meant to offend me by comparing me to my father but I always felt like if I stayed there I was going to be living in his shadow. I wanted to forge my own legacy. One day I interview for a job in the town I went to college in. Somehow, I get hired. Over the summer I move back and immediately I am excited for a multitude of reasons. Soon after moving back my wife and I begin spending a lot of time together. The two-month-old girl is now three years old, and my wife and I do the silly thing and get married within three months of me moving. This became the greatest decision of my life. Since getting married my wife and I have adopted the girl, made a few kids of our own, bought a house, and are truly living the fairy tale life. We've been married for several years and life couldn't be better. I tell this story because I want others to know you never know who the love of your life is. It could be a stranger, a friend, or a friend's girlfriend. This world is too short and crazy. If you made it this far I hope you enjoyed the read. This is my first time ever really making a reddit post. Bye and see you again in the next videos and stories.